Ladies and gentlemen, it's deep honor to introduce to you our guest of honor and speaker, the Acting Secretary of Foreign Affairs, the Honorable Evan Garcia. Secretary of National Defense, uh, the Honorable Ambassador of the United States, Honorable Chief of Staff, Vice Admiral Alexander Lopez, Deputy General Mahoney, senior officials and officers of the Department of National Defense, our friends from Australia, and the participating international observer countries. Allow me to begin by expressing the deep pride the Philippines and the United States bear for the men and women in our armed and security services. You protect the way of life and the democracy that we hold dear. Our freedoms, liberties, and values are made possible by your courage and sacrifice. We speak of our commitment to mutual defense, but it is the men and women of the armed services that see these commitments through. We stand tall, not simply as allies, but also as friends, bound by shared principles. The region and the world may change, but our dedication to the promotion and protection of the principles of democracy and freedom we in. Last year, we said that we were crafting our bilateral relations with the United States into a modern, mature, and forward-looking partnership, which is key in navigating the multipolar geopolitical environment. At the birth of our alliance, the challenge was to build democracy strong enough to withstand the communist threat. Today, the chaos brought about by terrorism, violent extremism, climate change, pandemics, and other humanitarian crises pose a larger threat to peaceful and democratic societies than political ideologies. Threats, nonetheless, that must be addressed regionally and globally. Our bilateral alliance has shown a constancy, resilience, and adaptability throughout these changed realities. During his visit to the Philippines, you may recall that President Barack Obama highlighted the deepening and broadening of our robust partnership. Articulating a policy earlier expressed by seven U.S. presidents who had visited the Philippines ahead of him, reiterating that allies never stand alone. As we launch the 31st iteration of the Balikatan exercises today, we jointly exhibit the continuing relevance and resilience of our alliance. As our oldest treaty ally, the United States has always been a key partner of the Philippines in building our defense capabilities through joint exercises like Balikatan. These trainings are fundamental in our efforts to secure and defend our people and territory from traditional and non-traditional threats. While, you, while we await the Supreme Court's decision on the Philippines-United States Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement, or EDCA, we look forward to eventually implementing defense engagement at a higher plane, boosting Philippine capabilities in the area of maritime security, maritime domain awareness, and humanitarian assistance and disaster response. We see EDCA as an opportunity to provide new momentum to our partnership, 
a partnership that has been a cornerstone of peace and stability in the Asia-Pacific region. Tensions in the Asia-Pacific region have increased due to excessive and expansive maritime and territorial claims, aggressive behavior that aims to change the status quo, undermining the rule of law, threatening the freedom of navigation, and overflight. We welcome the concern expressed by the Senate Armed Services Committee members on massive reclamation activities in the region. Incoming PACOM Commander Harry Harris has also said that these reclamation activities pose a serious threat to the stability of the South China Sea. This has even been echoed by President Obama. We look to our ally, the United States, to engage their own network of alliances in the region in helping to uphold the international order it has forged and put into place since World War II, thereby maintaining regional stability. U.S. support for our efforts to modernize our armed forces are also an important factor in creating an environment that can deter further aggressive actions. The U.S. has been actively assisting the Philippines in the areas of maritime security and maritime domain awareness. This is part of the context of the enhancement of Philippine-U.S. defense cooperation. Balikatan 2015, with its focus on maritime security, strongly supports our capabilities to address these challenges. Balikatan activities and exercises not only teach our militaries and security forces to work together, build our capacity for defense and security from a level of dependence to self-reliance, and enabling this historic partnership to address 21st century challenges. This year, we commemorate the 70th anniversary of the end of World War II, when together, Filipino and American soldiers and civilians bled and died for the cause of freedom on countless battlefields throughout Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Tragic as the war was for the multitudes killed, the trauma on the survivors led to the global institutions and organizations that helped to shape the world after the war. Bilaterally, the desire to keep the violence of war away from Philippine shores that led to the signing of the Philippines-U.S. Mutual Defense Treaty just six years after the war. In forging the MDT, we projected the future of our lands, affirming our common determination to defend against external armed attack so that no potential aggressor could be under the illusion that either of them stands alone in the Pacific area. To strengthen our efforts for collective defense, for the preservation of peace and security, pending the development of a more comprehensive system of regional security in the Pacific area. The challenge to maintain stability in the Asia Pacific remains. Our alliance endures, forged by common sacrifices anchored on a commitment to democratic values and deepened by a shared history, we bring our alliance into the 21st century. I am honored to be here with our brave men and women in uniform as we open Balikatan 2015. Your commitment, your patriotism, your courage humbles and inspires us all. On behalf of the Filipino people, allow me the privilege of thanking you. Thank you very much to the Acting Secretary of the Department of Foreign Affairs.
We'll have the photo session for now for our distinguished guests on.